Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Guys, guys, Kevin Roberts here, right? Um, beautiful Palouse Falls, right? Shout out to uh, Barbarian Apparel, Ohio Cast, right? Resolite Mats. We're here to talk about Resolite Mats, okay? Get a hold of me on Roberts Wrestling on Instagram, um, Roberts Wrestling at, at Outlook.com on email, right? And you want to talk about wrestling in the summer and camps, come out to the dungeon in eastern Washington, Spokane, Washington, right? Um, Resolite, go Resolite, go Ohio Cast, Barbarian Apparel. Okay, so tonight on Barbarian Hour, I have, of course we have Jared Opper, but our guest once again, welcome back, first first two time guest, head coach of Bellarmine University, newly named head coach Ned Shuck. Coach Shuck, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, man. Yeah, it's great to be back with you guys again, uh, especially on these terms for sure. So just real quick to introduce Coach Shuck. Coach Shuck was the head coach at Heidelberg University in Tiffin, Ohio, and then the head coach in Whitewater of Whitewater, Wisconsin, both Division Three NCAA institutions, and then made the big move from wow, Whitewater, Wisconsin, to West Point in New York to the uh, United States Military Academy at West Point. And Coach Shuck is a University of Iowa alumni under Coach Zaleski, right, Coach? That's right. Yep. Were all your years under Coach Zaleski? I forget. Yep. So Coach Zaleski was the head coach for the first uh, or the five years that I was there. Uh, coach Brands was the assistant for three of my five years there. And then uh, Steiner and, and Hartung, those guys came in for like, my last two. Got it. So, okay. So you have had quite the, uh, I would like to call it a meteoric rise in the college coaching ranks, uh, was your first head coaching job at uh, Heidelberg? Was I correct in that? Yeah, I mean, I did start right out of college. I started as a head coach at the high school level in, uh, in Chaska, Minnesota. Um, so that I was there for four years before going to Augsburg for two years as an assistant. Uh, I was still teaching at that time. And then, uh, yeah, my first head coach position was at Heidelberg though, uh, at the collegiate level. Okay, so you – actually are from Minnesota as well. You're a multiple time state placer in Minnesota, correct? That's right. Yep. You state finalist in Minnesota or are you third? Yeah, both. Yeah, both, both. of those. You're, you're third and second. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. were third and second yeah. in Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. So I got that right. Okay. So my memory is not failing me as of That's yet. Pretty so good. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is just all at the top of my head. I mean, we've been out boating all day, jumping off cliffs here in Kentucky Lake. So We've been making it happen all day. I don't know how far we are from you guys. Uh, where is actually where is Bellarmine uh, actually located? So Bellarmine is at, in Louisville. Yeah, um, and so kind of right there on the border with uh, uh, with Indiana. So yeah. Okay, so you guys aren't too far from uh, two Cincinnati hours from Cincy. Or two hours. Yep. Yep. That's right. It's so two hours from Cincy. I, I know Josh. Is a, yep. Josh is super excited. He's like, that's like their home team, right? For, uh, for BA. I'm hoping, right? um, yeah, I'm hoping, uh, home, I'm hoping I'm his new home team, you know, Bellerman can be his, uh, his new team to, uh, to move forward. Yeah. That's what, that'd be great. <laughs> the Knights, <laughs> right? They're the Knights, right? We're the Knights. Yeah. We're the Knights. Yeah. That's our mascot. So I moved from the Knights to the Knights. So that's a pretty good transition that way. <laughs> Hashtag swords up, right? Hashtag swords up. That's right. Yeah. I saw yesterday, today. So today, Gray Burnett and I, we went to this quarry out here with Scotty Burnett, and we went to this, this really cool quarry on Kentucky Lake. I can't do the Kentucky thing every time, but I wish I could. <laughs> Thanks. I do it here, and my wife and everybody else uh, is pretty annoyed with it. So I'll <laughs> let it go for the podcast. But we went to this really cool – so what Kentucky Lake is, it's a part of the Tennessee Valley Authority. TVA was from um, the 1930s and the Franklin D. Roosevelt. Uh, administration where they wanted to have rural areas to have power so they flooded all these river valleys in tennessee and kentucky and there's other states bordering states i'm guessing arkansas probably has some as well 
So anyhow, long story short, we're on Kentucky Lake and it's beautiful. It's massive, by the way. And uh, I think they said it was the biggest of the TDA, Tennessee Valley Authority from the 30s, 30s and 40s. Uh, but long story short, we're on this and it, there's, a, there's a stone quarry that they flooded as a part of this. And uh, they have these cliffs. They got, you know, 30, 40, they got 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh, not much anything bigger than 40, but uh, so I, I'm not very smart, Coach Chuck. And I jumped off a cliff when I was out doing camp with Kevin Roberts in Washington and Long Lake in uh, Nine Mile Falls, Washington. And I broke my tailbone. Don't know if it's broken, it's bruised at least. So today, of course, what do you do two weeks after you mess your tailbone up on a 60 footer? What do you do, coach? What do you do? Tell me what you do. You just got to step it down a little bit. You know, you got to warm yeah, up. Just, go down to 40 feet. Yeah. They're yeah. old. You're getting old. Go down to 40 feet. You go down to 40 feet. So my son Ferdinand did a 20 footer. That was awesome. I was super proud of him. Ah. And there wasn't, it wasn't a bunch of, he's five, you know, and there wasn't a bunch of prodding and pushing. And uh, he, he was asking, he's like, I want to go do that one. And, you know, we're not nuts. I mean, we are, but we aren't. And uh, I wasn't like, hey, Ferdinand, you want to go to the 40 quarter? Because not much good can come from that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, having a five-year-old do that. I mean, uh, in all honesty, just not much right. good can come from it. Only uh, death and despair. And I'm not into that. So. Gray Burnett did it with me though, you know, uh, Scotty Burnett's son. And then Scotty couldn't do it. Scotty was kind of, you know, you got a fear of heights, man. It's tough. It's tough. So <laughs> we did some really cool. Uh, this is a really neat place. Kentucky Lake. I know you guys, once you guys move down here and get uh, settled in, hopefully it's a place you guys get to. And we're in Benton, Kentucky, actually. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. No, looking forward to it. We, uh, we're totally into the outdoor stuff. So that'll be, uh, that'll be great. We just got back from, uh, from Northern Minnesota. So that's actually where I accepted the job was on my, you know, pretty, pretty much on my way up to the boundary waters area in Northern Minnesota. So that sounds like, uh, you know, some pretty similar, uh, land out there. So looking forward to, to getting out there with the fam. So today is your official first day, right? I mean, you're heading out to Fargo. Tomorrow, you said. Yeah, tomorrow is. Yeah. Tomorrow? Tomorrow okay. Is my first official day. And so I'll be heading out to Fargo on 16th. And uh, yeah, it'll be uh, be nice to to be out there. Josh can hook me up with some uh, some Bellerman apparel, so I'll have that out there for me already. So he's getting a quick turnaround for me, taking ah. care of me that way. And uh, so excited to be the rep and barbarian out there. But uh, but yeah, I'll be out there for three four days, and then then get back here and head down uh, permanently. So so what do you, you, you last episode you talk about being outdoors? And you just mentioned it again. What do you look at most? You know from from where you're at now to, to Kentucky, what are you looking forward to in Kentucky outside of wrestling? Yeah, it's, well, it's a total different uh, change for us. You know, we've been, we've kind of done some rounds, but we've kind of been on the Northern part of the, you know, the country, from Minnesota to, uh, mm -hmm. to Ohio, to Wisconsin and now to New York. And so, you know, we haven't uh, spent much time in, in the Southern state. So looking forward to that. And Louisville is just an absolutely awesome town. You know, I got to spend a little bit of time there in my interview and uh, as a wrestler, you, you learn to appreciate, uh, you know, good food and, uh, and Louisville is, uh, has got just amazing food and uh, great entertainment. It's a really cool town. So it's got a lot to offer that way. So we'll, we'll probably, you know, we ideally like to get out, uh, a little bit so we can have a little bit of land, you know, that'd be great. So I get a little, uh, you know, get a little bit of, uh, you know, trees and things like that to separate us a little bit, but, uh, you know, Kentucky's got a ton to offer it. You know, I didn't even know about this opportunity that Zeb was at. So, you know, we're gonna have to, to go check that out, but the location is awesome, right? We're right next to Ohio and Indiana and Illinois and Missouri and Tennessee. And, you know, so it'll be cool. It'll be really cool. There's a lot. To, I can't remember the statistics, either like 40 or 50% of the country is drivable. I don't know what drivable is, you know, and, and normal people's standard, you know, we, my wife is an absolute saint. So when we finished Northern Minnesota trip, we drove 21 and a half hours back here to, oh. to, uh, to New York straight through. So um, that was drivable, but uh, so I think we're probably in, in our, our percentage is that we're probably closer to 90% of the country. So we'll see. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. I've driven the whole entire country. The only actual drive that you can make that I have not made is I flew from Portland to Alaska. Okay. I have not made the trek from through like British Columbia 
to Alaska yet, but I've driven everything else. I mean, I, I you know, drove multiple laps around the Hawaiian Islands, which obviously you got to fly there, but yeah, I've driven everything else. You know, I've driven everything else and I've seen it like you've done. And I know you've done a lot of it on the recruiting trail, but yeah. uh, man, America, it's an amazing place. It is unbelievable <laughs> to come here, man. And just, just even this, you know, it's like we're a here. Hour change, right? Like, yeah. It's so wild, man. That, that's yeah. the biggest thing for me. And, and you do have a huge advantage. You know, Louisville, Kentucky is a great place, man. It's an awesome place. And I know that, you know, in talking to you, as you guys hear a speedboat in the background, uh, <laughs> I know in talking to you, you always find really, really positive things about every place you talk about. You know, we had a huge discussion about, you know, Army West Point and uh, the Military Academy at West Point. And, man, nothing but positive things. And I know you have nothing but positive things about, say, about Coach Ward and the staff there. Now he's got to replace you, and I know he's not happy about that. <laughs> but uh, what do you think is the biggest thing as far as transitions from West Point to Bellarmine that you're going to make? Uh, you know, as far as once you get there, you hit the ground running, you got to go to Fargo, you got to recruit. What do you think the biggest thing you're going to take from Army? What things are you going to change? What, what, what is going to be the biggest change for you as far as going from a, an elite military academy to a Southern Conference school? Yeah, so it'll definitely be a lot of changes, uh, you know, for sure. Just in those last little bit you mentioned, you know, going from a military academy, you know, to a SOCON school. And, uh, you know, just my leadership style, um, you know, is different. You know, I don't think you can find any two coaches that are going to be the same, you know. So there's going to be a lot of things I do differently just in terms of, you know, managing staff, running practice, you know, training stuff, what we're doing, you know, off the mat, um, what that looks like when you're not at a military academy, the expectations having for the guys, you know, to, to live a good, clean lives and, and uh, have a good time at, you know, at college at the same time. So there'll be a lot more, um, you know, from that standpoint, when you're at West Point, the, the off the mat type of stuff, you know, there's a, there's a quite a few chain of commands that uh, they have to respond to before it gets to the wrestling coach, you know? So from that regard, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of babysitting here with, uh, you know, off the mat type of stuff. And I don't expect that to be the case at Bellarmine either, but certainly going to have high expectations for the guys. And, but there's going to be, have to be more of a, a mentoring, a coaching, uh, you know, aspect that goes into that and what those expectations are. You know, West Point, if somebody messes up, you know, they're going to, they're going to get yelled at by, you know, six other people before they, before they hear from wrestling coach, you know, but we have, a, we had such an awesome team here at West Point. We just, we never really had to worry about that. And so I was actually just out to, Buckner right now, uh, which is our, where the guys do their army training. Right. And, uh, so I got a chance to say, see some guys and say goodbye to them. Uh, cause I haven't been able to see them yet. And so that was, uh, that was good to be able to see them one last time they're out there training, but they were kind of talking about that. Like, Hey, we, you know, because we, we kind of take care of business off the, you know, outside of, you know, uh, West point grounds and, and, and behavior wise, you know, Hey, if we get in trouble here or there, you know, West point, it's not really that big of a deal. So, They've got a good reputation, but those will, those will be some of the things that you change. But in terms of the wrestling side of things, you know, I've taken a lot from from Coach Ward on just different training methods. It's a complete different system that that I I grew up in at Iowa, you know, and 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 definitely my past head coaching experiences. I definitely uh, you know use that model significantly more than you know. Uh, I guess it's a lot different than what, I, what we experienced here at West Point. But I've learned that there's obviously a lot of ways to win. We did a lot of winning here at West Point. We had a lot of success. Um, and so I've learned some different methods. And, um, you know, he, he's really strong with the technical positional stuff. And, you know, that's an area where I think I'm really strong at too. Uh, but just a different way to teach. And, um, and so that, that'll be things that I take. And I'll take the things that I like and the things that I, I didn't, you know, I'll, I'll make my own and, and make adjustments. But there will be a lot of changes. I don't know what would be the biggest, you know, um, other than me just being in the leadership role, managing my staff um, and taking that on. And I'm really excited for that because that's, I like to run the program, you know, as a CEO. Uh, and that's something I, I really look forward to in taking this job is knowing that I get to manage my staff at the same time, allow them to do what they're good at, you know, not micromanage, but manage in a way that, hey, we're all in this together. You know, we're building this thing together from the ground up. It's really exciting. It's exciting to be a part of. And, uh, you know, just looking forward to getting the crew together to, 
to do that. But that's something I'm I'm uh, I'm passionate about. Where when you're in the associate head, you know, coach role, you don't do a lot of those things, right? That's not not my job to manage the rest of the staff type of deal. So from that side of things, I think that might be the biggest changes in terms of daily operations, um, how that works. But well, there certainly will be a lot of changes. But uh, but yeah. <laughs> so, so with that change, right, <clears throat> going to D1, right, you know, D2 school, going to D1, coming off of COVID, what changes are still happening within the program there at Bellarmine? Uh, you know, from the schedule to recruiting, whatever it may be, that, that's a big change, right? D2 D, to D1, you know, then throw COVID in and then throw a new coach in. So what, what's some of the changes that, that are happening? Yeah, yeah, you're right. 100% there's been a ton of changes, you know, for the program's sake. Hey, the COVID year has actually gave them a little bit more of the year of, uh, you know, a little bit more flexibility for those guys who were part of the program last year, which this is great. Past year was their first D1 year, right? That's right, yep. So they wrestled the SOCON uh, dual meet schedule last year. Um, and so, yeah, they uh, just didn't get to wrestle in the conference NCAA tournament. So we'll have, you know, three years is what it is right now that we'll have before we can compete in the NCAA tournament. Uh, they've put in some some paperwork to try to appeal that to, to knock off a year. So obviously we're really hopeful that will happen. Uh, but right now, yeah, we're planning on the three years before we get to compete in the conference tournament. But in terms of changes that are happening, like kind of right now, outside of a yeah, new staff coming in, you know, um, you know, all the new things that come with that, you know, the the wrestling room is going to see some uh, some significant changes. It's a really great space that we have right now. Um, it's kind of an open canvas for us to do what we want. And so been uh, really excited working with AD on that and just talking to him about, you know, potential vision for what can be done with the space. And so uh, really looking forward to getting that mapped out, you know, get some, you know, uh, design engineers in there and, and raising some money and, and, uh, and making that thing happen. But, um, but yeah, outside of that, um, you know, it'll just be a, it'll be a lot of work for us to, to get things rolling with RTC, with the club, you know, right now they don't have any of those things in place. And so that'll be really key for us to get that going so we can get some athletes in there. Uh, we can start involving the, the local area a lot more, start getting Kentucky wrestling, you know, attached to our program a little bit more and, and hopefully raise the entire, you know, youth and high school level uh, up a notch from where they're currently at. Okay, so you have a connection with the Zaleskis. Lenny Zaleski's team, Cal Baptist, is just coming off their final year of probation. Isn't that correct? Yeah, I think, I think it's, I think they have one more year, I think, but I could be off on that. I think this might be their last year. Actually, this might've been their last year, but you, you could be correct too. They might be trying to do the same thing you guys are doing to try and get a year knocked off due to COVID. Right. So is that someone that you reach out to? I know that you're really into picking people's brains and asking, you know, your questions, you're an inquisitive guy, you're, you're, uh, definitely a two ears over one mouth guy you know you, you believe that you were given two ears to listen rather than one mouth to talk right That's so right. you're always picking people's brains is that someone you reach out to and kind of kind of navigate that and see what he did for those four years absolutely yeah you know i haven't done that yet but but absolutely uh, there's i mean not only him, but there's a ton of coaches across the country, right? I'm, and to be honest with you, most of my time right away is going to be spent with the, the coaches at Bellarmine. You know, they've been here. They've been recruiting at Bellarmine in this transition. And so, you know, they've been doing it for a little bit longer than I have. And uh, I got a lot to learn from them, you know. But uh, but certainly within the wrestling world, you know, even in taking the job, yeah, I reach out to a lot of coaches, um, you know, just asking their advice, you know, about the opportunity, about – uh, what they did to be successful, you know, I, I reached out to, uh, you know, Pat pop, you know, was a guy that I reached out to thinking, Hey man, he's a guy that, you know, didn't start at NC state, you know, um, and talked to him about it, you know, I reached out to Chris Bono. Obviously I talked with coach Ward, you know, um, I, I mean, I reached out to a lot of coaches, obviously, you know, coach Gable, coach brands, you know, all those guys that, um, you know, I've been associated with, um, yeah, I'm sure there's a couple more that I'm probably leaving off, but to talk about the opportunity, it's something, like you said, that's important for me to, to, to go back and learn. I saw you guys just did an interview with uh, uh, Coach Ayers from Princeton, you know, and, you know, he's a guy, obviously, that um, has taken a program from not doing so hot uh, near the bottom to, you know, a, a very, very competitive program, having a lot of success. And so, 
know, from there's a lot of people I can learn from within the sport that, and I'm thankful that a lot of those guys are willing to give back. You know, I didn't need to get a call back from any of those guys, <laughs> you know, they don't owe me anything. Right. And, uh, and they were very gracious with their time and, you know, um, you know, coach Joe Russell is another one, you know, his, his path looked a little bit different and he was somebody I wanted to talk to being a, you know, assistant at, at Minnesota for so long and then taking over at George Mason and now at USA wrestling, like, that was somebody in my mind I had to talk to you. Right. Uh, and so the, it's, it's going to be important. It'll be important that I continue to learn all the way through. Um, it's not going to be a, Hey, for the first couple of weeks, I'm talking to those guys and there'll be, a, there'll be guys that, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, to uh, continue to learn from as, as I continue to build it. So, so you mentioned um, knocking the years off. I'm, I'm not familiar with how that works. Is that something that normally happens? They knock a year off uh, that three-year window or how, what's that? What, what are they looking at for that to make that happen? I'm not sure the details on that or the history of any programs that have done it successfully or not. If there are, hopefully we're doing exactly what they did. <laughs> um, but I wasn't a part of that process. So that'll be something more I learn about, you know, I'm sure when I get down, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, you know, going to be remain hopeful for that, but, uh, but yeah, we'll see. I'm hoping it's not one of those fallacies, you know, that the the wrestling coaches are kind of known for with, uh, hey, we're going to get a new facility thing, you know, <laughs> well, you, <laughs> and not, not for, you know, it just goes on and, you know, 20 years later, they're right, right. Uh, can't be to raise some money. So I'm hoping it's not, you know, one of those things, but yeah, at the worst case scenario, we're, we're three years out. Yeah. Right. And you already have a year in, right? So is it another two, right? Another, yeah, another three. Yeah. Another yeah. three. Okay. But they're trying to get a year knocked off. You guys are yeah. trying to get a year knocked off. I don't know why you wouldn't. I mean, what's, what's the worst thing I can do, say, right? but no. Right. right. I mean, I don't know, you know, exactly. I mean, you got to try that. Now, I know, I remember Gardner Webb was in transition when we wrestled them in like 0203, I want to say, 010203. So, Coach Elliott probably has a, a pretty good insight to it because he actually qualified. He was one of their first T1 qualifiers, I believe for Gardner Webb. So that's, and that's a guy that's in your conference, right? Yeah. So he, he probably obviously has some insight on it. And then he's a good dude. I mean, okay. So what is the situation as far as funding? Are you guys 9.9? .9? What is your funding? How many coaches do you have? How many assistants do you have? Where is Bellarmine at with that? Yeah. So that was really important for me, just knowing that, Hey, this, is this a place that I can win at? Right. Um, that was important to, to make sure that I wasn't hopping into a situation that I didn't feel like we could have a lot of success. And so um, scholarship wise, we're not at 9.9. .9. Um, we're not the only program transition in division one. So there's, you know, the entire, uh, you know, athletics department is. And so um, they're hiring coaches all over the place and, and the scholarship stuff is, you know, something that will continue to be tiered up and, and raised up right now. We're sitting just, just below five. Uh, so we're, you know, we're in a pretty good situation in my mind uh, that way to, to be able to offer some scholarship money to make it incredibly affordable for, for these kids. And, you know, every kid that gets accepted gets a huge, uh, you know, grant, you know, uh, towards their, towards their uh, bill. And so from that side of things, it's, I feel like we can be really competitive when recruiting to make it affordable for families to be there. And so that was important. You know, the other side of that is the operating budget, right? Like, making sure you have enough to, to be able to travel, to be able to travel, to recruit, right. And provide the guys what they need, um, you know, just to, to have the level of competition you need to see to, to build the program. And, and I, I thought, you know, Hey, we're not, we're not where I, I hope we're going to be in three years. Right. But I, I do believe that, Hey, we have enough right now uh, to really kick this thing off and do really well um, from the assistant coaches side of things. Uh, we have one full-time uh, assistant that I'll be hiring Hopefully that'll be posted here in the next couple of days. Uh, so you so are hiring, you are hiring an assistant. Yep. You're letting you bring your, your own people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and so that's the first year that they've done that prior. They haven't had a full-time assistant. So they elevated that position, which is great. And then uh, we also have a grad assistant uh, that's getting added. So, um, you know, we're excited about those opportunities and yeah, we got some work to do there too. Right. We gotta, we gotta get another position, uh, you know, in there and, and, uh, get our club stuff going so we can, you know, hire a volunteer and, and get that stuff moving. But, uh, but ultimately, uh, you know, for me, one of the things with that is like, okay, we're not quite where we want to be, how are we going to get there? So it was important to me that we're going to have some flexibility fundraising wise, right. To be able to, to be able to do some things. And, and that's where I was really encouraged to, uh, to know that, Hey, yeah, there's going to be flexibility there for us to, to do what we need. If I can go out and get the work done, 
right? And it's on my hands to, to go out and fundraise. I can, I can do that. And uh, obviously the school is going to continue to get behind the program and continue to up the stakes every year, you know, which I'm, you know, excited for and grateful for. But, but ultimately I do like the fact that, Hey, it's in my hands. You know, if I want to get something done, well, I got to get out there and get it done and, and find a, you know, find a way. So that was really encouraging to me. If, if it was something where, Hey, things were kind of set in stone, you know, I've been, it'd been kind of tough to just, you know, take that. So I appreciate their flexibility and their understanding of what it takes and where they want to get us to, uh, to be an upper level, you know, school in the country. You mentioned so rising junior rising juniors will be the first class who could actually wrestle for you guys. If you look at the rising juniors, right? So you could have rising junior rising junior could wrestle next year in high school, uh, wrestle their senior year, and then they could take a red shirt year as a freshman for you. They were the, they're the technically the first class that could actually wrestle for you guys at Bellarmine and actually represent you in an NCAA championship. Is that something where we target them? How do you sell someone who's a senior right now? How do you sell someone who's a senior to come to Bellarmine? How do you sell that? Coach? Yeah. So I, first you sell everything else that, uh, you know, that Bellarmine has to offer what I have to offer as a coach and, and our staff will, you know, what the, the areas and, and everything combined. Right. And then you have that other component. That's the obvious, right. It's a, uh, we're not going to try to skirt around it, you know, tell them what it is, you know, it's, Hey, you're not going to be eligible your freshman year or, you know, whatever it may be, right. However many years it is for them to compete at the NCAA tournament. You know, it's not like they don't get to do anything, right. They get a whole dual meet, you know, SOCON schedule plus tournaments, you know, and so from that regard, they're going to have plenty of opportunities to compete. You know, we also have the, you know, the international scene, right. When we get our uh, RTC stuff going. So they're going to have U23s. They're going to have UWW juniors. They're going to have us open, you know, all that stuff that, uh, you know, they get to compete in a, at a national level as well to see those guys that maybe they didn't get to see, a chance to see if they, you know, weren't in our conference or didn't, you know, wrestle at a Midlands or a Southern scuffle or something like that. Um, but yeah, that'll be an obvious objection to overcome, but um, I'm confident that, uh, you know, uh, you know, with my recruiting and, and how I build relationships with kids, they'll be able to see the value in what, what Bellarmine has to offer and, and what they're going to get out of their experience here and how it's going to provide for them for the rest of their life. You know, ultimately that's going to be, they're going to be with us for four or five years, you know, but outside of that, you know, uh, <laughs> that's going to be a short window. It's going to be a blink of an eye in, in, the, in the course of their entire lifespan. And so it's about preparing them and getting them ready for, you know, what's beyond and, and, uh, you know, given the, the high academics, um, you know, at, at Bellarmine and, and the reputation of the school, um, I'm very, very excited to, uh, to be able to recruit kids and tell them about, hey, you're coming out of here, getting a great job, you know, to be able to show them what our alumni are doing, to, to look, show them the career field that they're in. Those are things I'm excited to learn more about, but what I've seen so far has been really positive and something really encouraging, but never going to skirt around those things, you know, they'll just tell it how it is. And if they got concerns about it, you know, you know, we can look at things like, Hey, how many freshmen last year were in the national tournament? You know um, I don't know. There's a decent amount probably, you know, but those are things that we'll have discussions about. And uh, you know, it's not going to be a wasted year for them, but they're going to miss out on two, two tournaments, you know, uh, it'll be like, uh, you know, maybe it'll be a little bit like the, the COVID year that got taken away, you know. <laughs> so, so you mentioned, excuse me, a blank canvas, right? Uh, when you, you, and you talk fundraising, what's the first plan of attack? Is it your facilities? Is it, you know, adding a coach, putting it into your RTC? What, what's, what's on, you know, you're a methodical, you know, guy, like Zeb mentioned, you, you, you have a plan. What, what's that yeah. fundraising goals look like? Yeah, well, I think, you know, and definitely have the big picture all the way across the board, right? What needs to happen on each of those things you just mentioned, right? And then, yeah, you can have your priorities, you know, but, you know, to be honest with you, when you're, when you're fundraising, some people are passionate about, you know, a uh, certain, certain level of things that, you know, um, made, made cost some funds to go somewhere else, you know? Um, and I'm certainly, if somebody's willing to give money to our program. If I'm um, coming I'm, in and saying, here, you, you do it. Here, here's a big old check. What are you going to do with it? You're going to put it when you're going to, what are you going to go after first? I guess for me, it'd be staffing. Yeah. yeah. For me, it'd be staffing. Cause I think the team that we have around us, I mean, facilities are great. Right. I mean, but you know, are we going to be the top, are we going to put up the top facility in the country? No, we're not, mm -hmm. you know, we're, right. we're, we're, I mean, and we don't need to, we, there's, I mean, there's no need to, I'm not, we're not trying to be in an arms race with the big 10 schools, you know um, you know, we see, see the fundraising campaigns that are out there right now. And it's like, 
you have one of the best facilities by far already in the world. And, you know, you're wanting to raise more money for the next best thing. And I mean, they can great. You know, if I was in that position, I'd probably be doing the same thing, you know, like, Hey, let's keep up in the standard here. But, but the reality is like, you know, I always love the example of Cuba. Like, you know, I've seen the pictures of the places they train in, you know, like how are they able to turn out some of the best in the world? You know, it wasn't because of their facilities, you know, <laughs> wasn't because they had all the supplements provided for them and they had, you know, Gatorade machines in their locker room and, you know, had cold splash and, you know, saunas and had all, I mean, it wasn't because of any of that, mm-hmm. you know, they, <laughs> and so facilities are important. We want to provide a great place. We do have a great place for them to train right now. It maybe doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but, uh, so it was a lot different than my experience at Heidelberg, you know, uh, uh, the tin gym was, gym, was yeah. an awesome place. Tin gym, you know? dude, I love it. But, uh, tin but you know, gym. I mean, we walked through and it was, you know, literally I, I walk recruits through it, you know, they could look down the wall and see right outside the building, you know, there's holes in the building that were that big. And so like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah, this is where we train, you know? And so what so you're, you're not selling, stuck with the tin, tin gym, right? <laughs> that, that, at the start, right? <laughs> Well, tin I mean, gym was kind of sweet though. Hold on, hold on. Right. Let me defend good. the tin gym. They love the tin gym. You know <laughs> that, right? Don't we insult did. the tin gym. I'm, tin I'm gym not. is very, it's very rocky primitive though. Would you agree with that? That's a, that was our that was our pitch. Yeah, this is a rocky feel. This is character. It's got character, yeah. right? And it works. So it's hundred percent that, and it, it's yeah. a standalone too. The, the tin gym yep. standalone. Yep. Yeah, no, it was, it was awesome. It was sad, man. I was, you know, I, I was part of creating the, the funding for their new facility, you know, um, but it was sad. I was like, man, they're like, oh, we got to tear this thing down as soon as possible. And I'm like, you sure we can't renovate? You know, I was like, <laughs> the guys love, I mean, the T. That they, was probably the same feeling it, right? when they tore down TCs, right? Same feeling. Same feeling. Agreed. And Sean yeah. once shed a tear, tear. Yeah. Yes, 100%. <laughs> 100%. You're right, Amy, but yeah. I mean, facilities are facilities, man. Kent State's still in the room that Jared and I wrestled in. They're still in the room that Don Horning wrestled in. They're doing okay. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. you said, it's, you know, getting in an arms race with the Big Ten, you're not going to win that. Right. You're just not going to win that. Got to know what you are. You're a SOCON school. You know that. You know, you know the space that John Marks got. You know the space that uh, Sentis has got. You know, the space is these, you know what Daniel Elliott's got? They got a sweet space, by the way, at Gardner Webb. But <laughs> you get my point, right? Like, it's, it's, it's a SOCON school. They are schools that are only in Division One, mainly only Division One, and, you know, you guys are transitioning. You know that. But yep. most of those schools are similar to the PA schools, the old PSAC schools, right? That's and right. you got to be what you are, I, in my opinion, I think. And I, I like the move with staffing. I like what you're doing with staffing. I already know this. I already know that Jack Gillespie is the first call for Bellman's assistant coach. You're already going to see him when you get out to Fargo. It's going to be your automatic hire. You're welcome, coach. I knew that. I knew that was already where you were going with it. <laughs> Jack, you guys you are teammates, know. weren't you? We were. We were. I don't How know. How many years? Oh, uh, so I think he was two years older than I was. So we we're for are three. You 2000 grad. I was 2000 high school. Yeah. Yeah. So he's two years. Yeah. Because we're him and I are 98 grads. We're old. Yeah. But Did they uh, make yeah, him better than Jack Gillespie, though. Did they make him better than Jack Gillespie, though. Honestly, they sure don't. They, sh- they sure don't. He does. He does it all, man. He does it all. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I've ever got Jack to say yes to me on anything. To be honest with you, he's <laughs> he's, always, he's always great. You know, as much as a recruit in Ohio, I just now it's just kind of a joke. Like I invite him, hey, let me let me take you out to lunch, or hey, let me get you coffee, or hey, you know, whatever, right? Like I've never gotten a yes from him, so it's like. You know, he's, you know, he's always busy. You know, somebody's always got to get weight. He's got to get weight off somebody. You know, he's got to get lineups rates, doing some lifting for the guys. You know, he's always got something going. So, like, I only get to see him in a wrestling room or at a, at a wrestling competition. That's it. We don't, you know, we don't get to hang much. So, I was, I'm always Crazy. trying to hang with him, but he's, you know, he's always turning me down. So, you have to give him a hard time about that. Jack's busy. He's a busy man. <laughs> he's a busy man. <laughs> he's a busy man making sure that the Allera Pioneers are getting their weight cut, getting their lifts in. And um, getting their extra runs and anything like that, right? Like, right. he's a, he's a busy man. Jack is a busy man. Yeah. So okay, um, you get out to Fargo. What are the what are the things you look at? What do you you know? We've talked about this before. Obviously, the recruiting shifts because you could only get you could only recruit under two percent of the high school athletes, right? At West Point, it's West Point. Now, 
it's a very, very, very large amount of kids that you can get into Bellarmine. It's very different, right? What are the, what are the needs? What are the wants? What do you look for in a kid? At Fargo, Greco, Freestyle, Cadet, Junior, what are you looking for? Yeah, so, um, yeah, some of the profiles of the, of the kids I'm, I'm familiar with just because I've, I have recruited a lot of kids, you know, over the last few years. But, you know, academically, you know, Bellarmine is a strong school, so we're not going to be able to slide everybody in. Um, so that will be something that's still really important to us. Um, the GPA side of things is, is still really important for our AD and making sure that the team had a 3.43 last year, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, so wow. that'll be a tough bar to, to, to continue to raise for sure. Coach set the, the bar high there. But, um, but yeah, in terms of what I'm looking for, you know, I'm always looking for kids that, that love to compete and can tell that they have, they have a passion for the sport, right? Um, you, you can see some kids that like, you know, especially the, you know, at Fargo that have been training for a while, you know, maybe not under their own will. They get out there and they can't wait to be done, right? Um, but, you know, uh, you start getting close to those All-American rounds. I love those rounds, those blood rounds at Fargo. Those are some of my favorite rounds to see just because, like, you really get to see, hey, who's the, who's just going to tough it out here and be greedy? I mean, Fargo is going to be loaded this year, and, uh, and it's going to be a blast. Man. There's going to be a lot of really good kids that don't All-American this year. And, uh, and so, hey, if you, you can All-American this year on, on the way through, like, you're, you're, you're a pretty dang good wrestler, you know, but in terms of, uh, you know, wrestling side of things, man, I'm, I'm wide open here. I don't, I don't recruit necessarily like a specific, Hey, it's gotta be this style. Um, you know, I, I liked it when I like it to see when a kid really has his style figured out, you know, a Marcus Hartman, you know, wrestles, you know, way different than everybody else in the country. You know, when I coached him here at West Point, he, I coached him differently than I coached the next guy, you know? And so I'm not afraid to get, different styles from guys, but I do want to see that, Hey, they love the sport. They want to compete. They compete hard. Winning matters to them. Um, it's something that, uh, you know, they want to, they want to continue to compete at a really high level. And, uh, you know, in talking to the kids, you want to, you want to get uh, the feeling that, Hey, that they want to wrestle and, and compete for multiple all American national championship status when they get to the division one level. And so when I'm there, it's a lot of evaluation you know, when you can talk to the kids, great. It's time to build relationships with the kids and, and uh, let them know, you know, it's going to be great seeing a lot of high school coaches out there being able to have, uh, you know, the barbarian, uh, you know, apparel gear on, you know, and walking around with that and, and people seeing the name, you know, being able to say, Hey, I listened to your podcast on barbarian hour, you know, and, and uh, you know, I heard about your story, really excited for your program. Like those are the type of conversations that I'll get to have at Fargo that, you know, you just don't get to have anywhere else. I mean, and you know, the Iron Man or something like that. I'm gonna run to a lot of coaches, right? But there's no place like Fargo. You're gonna see everybody across the country. That it'll be great exposure for a program. So it won't just be recruits I'm talking to. It'll be a lot of people, and and that'll be a good time for me to pick uh, pick the minds of some of those coaches that you know we talked about uh, before to, to find out what they've done to to be successful in their program. But man, there's so much that goes into recruiting. It's not it's not an easy game. Uh, there's a lot of evaluation. But, uh, you know, trying to find those kids that are, you know, are excited about being where you're at and uh, excited for me, you know, for my uh, position now that they want to be part of something that's new. They want to be part of building that program and they want to, you know, kick it off and, and uh, you know, start out the, the next, you know, Division One dynasty in the, in the SOCON. And so from that side of things, uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot, like I said, that goes into it, but man, there's. It's going to be a lot of fun. I love Fargo. Absolutely love Fargo. So a, a potential recruit, what's, uh, is Bellarmine pre-med? What are they known for? Pre-med? Is, or what, they have a lot of really strong health fields. Yeah. They, yeah. And not just, you know, medical fields, but all the shoot offs from, from that as well. And, you know, all the athletic training stuff, PT, that, those type of things. But, but yeah, they have, I mean, they have everything else too, you know, the, the strong business program and education, all that. And so okay. it gets a real wide spectrum a spectrum of, of majors, but definitely the, the medical side of things is, uh, and the health fields are, are really strong. Okay. What, what size of school? Like I said, this is all new to me. You know, what, yeah, what yeah. Is it's it? a, yeah, it's, a, it's about 4,000 students right now. Yep. And so, um, you know, I know they're still looking to grow that. I think they'd like to be around 5,000. Um, so yeah, that's, it's going to be a, a, on the smaller side of things, you know, pretty similar to, to West Point, you know, we had 4,400 at West Point. So cool nice i'm in west point don't get me going i'm done i can't do it on west point i just 
I admire the whole West Point model and what they do. And you know that we've talked about that at, at length and what they do. But, man, things are just going to change for you so much, Coach. It's, it's crazy to me. Uh, vision speaking, vision-wise speaking. You know, I talked to Coach Colad. He came up for Defense Soap uh, and OAC, uh, a combine that we had at the Defense Soap uh, facility and talk to him about the difference because he's doing the opposite of you. You know, he, yeah. you know, you're leaving in a military academy. He left a SOCON school and went to a military academy. You guys are making opposite moves, right? Yeah. And he talked about Campbell had mass recruiting, right? Now he's like, yeah, I mass recruited. He got, he, Quentin Perez was like a guy that was like a state champ in Texas. And he told the Quentin Perez story and upside was the big thing he talked about, you know? But it's just totally different when you're going to the academies because you just can't get such a narrow sliver of kids you can get in. It's just hard. You know that. We've talked about it at length. Now you got some leeway, right? Now you can recruit kids that you couldn't talk to before. So I'm just, or I'm really interested just to see how it plays out for you. I know you're interested and in to see how it's going to play out. For, I mean, I'm just, I'm super excited about it, but vision speaking. Is there any doubt in your mind that within five years of that transition, you guys can't be winning a Southern Conference title? No, there isn't. Um, and I don't, I, but I'm, I don't say that thinking that oh, it's just going to be an easy, it's going to be a no brainer, like, you know, shoe in type of deal. You know, they got some great coaches right now in the SOCON and programs that are, are continuing to build. And you mentioned some of the others having resources, you know, they're getting more and more resources. And so the SOCON is, is getting stronger and stronger, which is really exciting. Um, you know, but I do, I do have a lot of belief in myself and our, and our ability to win and my ability to develop and train athletes and to recruit athletes and to fundraise and all the things that go into the entire vision of the program. Right. And so, um, you know, I have confidence that that will happen. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't say that, you know, lightheartedly saying that, Hey, it's just going to be a shoe in and we're just going to come in and walk through these guys. Cause that's, I mean, that's just not going to be the case. We're going to have to fight you know, tooth and nail for everything that we get all the way along the, the, the process. And so, but yeah, I mean, that's something I, I 100% believe we, we will do. Okay. So I'm, I'm pretty invested in the Southern conference if you didn't know. Okay. So my nephew, Ian Miller is the assistant coach at app state. We've yep, had him on yep. the show. And then my other nephew who is a state undefeated state champ for Oak Harbor, where we're from, he is now at app state and he's going to be fighting for the starting position this year at 197 Wyatt Miller. They had App State had five. They won the first five weights. Arguably, their two best guys. They're 65 and they're 74. Uh, Flitz is one of them, and I can't remember who the 65 is. But arguably, their two best guys don't win the conference. They have five champs, seven qualifiers. They didn't win the team conference. So it's a tough conference to win. They, they, they broke their they broke the record. Their school record had seven qualifiers. They didn't win the conference. That's yeah. wild to me. And I think that that's a testament to how good Campbell is, right? I just yeah. think that the con it must be a crazy conference. The scoring, I don't know what it is, but whatever happened, they didn't score a couple weights. I, th I know that obviously hurt, but everybody seven matters, right? qualifiers. They had seven yeah. qualifiers. They didn't win the conference. They had five champs they didn't win the conference. So it's, yeah. it's obviously not a pushover conference. I'm excited. And it's obviously the amount of qualifiers have gone up in the qual in the, in the conference. So I'm just excited, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, man, I mean, those are, that's, those are two programs right there that obviously have done a great job and consistently, right. They're getting up there and, 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 uh, and continue to get better and better. And, you know, winning the, winning the conference tournament like that, you know, yeah, you can't, you can't be in a position if you want to win that you don't have guys scoring points out of every weight. <laughs> you have, I mean, you have to have guys scoring points out of every weight, you know, no matter how many champs you have. And that's just a little bit, you know, going from, you know, a conference where we had 17 teams in the IWA, you know, to SoCon having, you know, significantly less. And so, so that'll be, that'll be important. You got to have depth across the board to win the conference tournament, um, you know, and, and that's important, you know, but, you know, ultimately, yeah, winning the, you know, getting yourself in a position to have a lot of guys in the NCAA tournament, is, you know, that's the, that's the ultimate goal, right? So, so absolutely. You're, you're a goal, goal oriented, you know, guy, right? You're writing down your goals every morning, right? We talked about that. And yeah. So, so is that what you're writing down? Is it the NCAA? Is that the vision or is it the conference or what, what's, what are you preaching to the guys, you know? That first meeting, yeah. Yeah, what are you saying? Yeah, so, I, you know, I don't do a whole lot of uh, that type of, like, outcome, 
like, like specific like goal writing or like, the process hey, goal yeah it's more more of a process goal but you know i, I it's really like I, I try to like think about my my days it's like hey what how do i win today right how do i how do i get it done today for the long term vision right knowing right. that hey this is oh, what's the most it, right? important thing today that needs to get done you know and so i think that kind of helps me me gear towards that you know i always just tell my guys like they write to go hey you know 2021 national champions like that's awesome that's i love that you're thinking about winning national that's important for you to be thinking about that mm -hmm. you know but what does tomorrow look like for you you know what's today look like for you and really just breaking down that like you know and i i, I do a lot of like backwards type thinking right that planning of all right that's where you need to be now when the national champions where you need to be okay what does that look like in march for you what does that look like in february you know and, and just and move it back and so what needs to happen within that time frame to put yourself in a position to do that and so that's kind of you know um so the goals i write down aren't necessarily like the you know hey one year out i gotta this is my accomplishment you know to get there but um and so you know, and I don't just write down wrestling goals, you know, it's important for me. I have other goals that, you know, for me as a person personally, that, uh, that I need to stay focused on every day. And if I don't, that won't be my best, you know, I won't be the best for my guys and, or my family. Right. Um, it's easy, super easy when you're really passionate about a sport like wrestling. I am like to just get consumed in throw everything that you have into it and, you know, let other things slide. And obviously family is not something you want to let slide. And it's certainly not something I want for my kids. You know, I have two boys, you know, Lucas and Micah are eight and 10 years old and, uh, you know, an absolutely amazing wife and Jennifer. And, you know, that's, that's not something that, uh, I don't think it's a give and take, you know, people talk about balance, right? Oh, we got to have a balance, this and that. And I don't really believe in the word balance either. I think that's kind of, kind of a bunch of malarkey, but, uh, but ultimately like, if your priority is your family, then where's your family fit into that? Where's your family fit into the day? Mm -hmm. If, 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 if they're not a priority, well, then they're not fitting into the day, <laughs> you know? And so, but for me to be successful or development, I need to have my family behind me hundred percent. My wife needs to be behind me and she is, she's an absolute saint. She's fired up for the move, nervous, scared, all the same thing, you know, like everything. She's feeling all emotions right now, but she's fired up for it. And she's ready to support. She's talking about all the things that she wants to do for the program. Right. I'm, I'm, and I'm like, yeah, let's do that. Like what you said, you know, <laughs> but there's a, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, the goal writing thing and that stuff for me is just, yeah. How, how am I going to, how am I going to attack the day to get to where we need to be? You know, keeping the major things, the major things, you know, not minor and, you know, uh, you know, folks on my major, major focus being on the minor things that don't matter. Reverse engineering goals. I like that. I've never heard of that. Like I've never, like you're, you're saying you're doing backwards and you break them down. I like that. I think that uh, a lot of us could reverse engineer our goals to figure things out and to do them properly. Like when the Russians steal stuff from the Americans, right? They or we steal stuff from the Russians or the Germans. We were, we have to yeah. like tear their stuff apart and figure out what they're doing. How did they do this? How did they make this? Right. And no. I think that a lot of people get lost on, like you said, ah, 2021, 2022, NCHM, 2022, SOCON champ, 2023, SOCON champ, you know, all American 2024 or Bellarmine's first ever. Right. I think that they get lost in that. And Tervel, the Lagnam talked about that a lot. Like Johnny DeGilius talked about like that, like, you know, becoming the person that it takes to do that, not just becoming that goal, not just yep. becoming on um, that what person do I got to be to do that? And I, I really like that reverse engineering goals. Like, yep. That's like the best way I can explain what you said, kind of tearing it down and figuring it out. What's day to day. It look like, and that's awesome. Yep. Now, now coach Chuck, I don't, I don't know if Jared told you who's coming on next. Did he tell you? No, he didn't. No, we're still working. Okay. Uh, we're working on it. What's it? We're working on it. Well, so he's we traveling to Fargo it. right now. Uh, we're so still working. Should... We're still working. Oh, he, he's another... in, but yeah, you know, with Fargo, who knows with his flight and things like that. Yeah, that's right. So, but we got another guest uh, potentially coming on. It is the Barbarian Hour. I did ruin uh, Anthony mm -hmm. Ashnell's night one night. night. You ruined his night for sure. I don't think I ruined his night, but I think he was like, it's the Barbarian two hour, huh, Sub? <laughs> he was super cool about it. He was super cool. He got it. Was he not super cool? He's, about he's it? awesome. He's an awesome <laughs> man. Yeah, for his age, right? I mean, he he gets it. He gets the big picture. Um, you got to meet him up, right? At Spires Ebb. And he, yeah. When you walked out of there, remember you texted me, dude, this guy is awesome. We got to get him on the yeah, show. He's the, he's the man. So. He's awesome, man. 
Well, Shuck's the man. That's who we got now in front of us. Coach Shuck, do you have any stories? You got a Jack Gillespie story. You got a Jim Zaleski story. You got any good stories for us about any of your teammates, any, any of your travels at Whitewater, at Heidelberg, at yeah. Tin Gym, any, any good stories you got? For <laughs> you think, we yeah, like to get a good story even, out of people. Right? So you guys may, I'll tell you, I'll tell uh, uh, my story. Maybe a lot of, maybe some people don't know, but Jason Russell is now uh, head coach at Thomas Moore was one of my wrestlers. Uh, at Heidelberg. Um, so I liked it. This is a story. I had I him on it. the other, sh- my other, the other, sh- the other show I have. I had him on one of the first. He's an awesome guy. Yeah. Jared, what's really- your other show, Jared? Can yeah. you tell us what the your wrestling other show philosophy? Is? Yeah. Wrestling. The wrestling <laughs> philosophy. With Jason Jared Russell's okay. Awesome. I was just wondering. He, he's, you know, he's tight with, with Josh at Barbarian, too, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. But no, so, so Jason's he, your guy. He's my, yeah. He's one of my wrestlers. Somebody I, I talk to probably daily still. I, I love the dude. Um, and he's doing awesome, right? I think they finished eighth in the country at three all Americans. The program barely got, you know, barely rolling and he's already doing great things, but, um, but yeah, he's a guy we, we, and he's a guy that likes to tell stories too. And, and he reminds me of a lot of things about me being a young head coach that I don't remember, you know, happening. So that's, those are always good to hear that, you know, as a, as a coach, you don't really focus on and remember. And, uh, he does a good job of reminding me, uh, some of the crazy stuff I did, but, but uh, I'll tell one story because I was trying to get him to go 184 for us my first year. And, uh, you know, he was struggling a little bit with the weight cut. And uh, we stopped at Subway, you know, like you normally do when you're at a Division three school and don't have any money. And, you you know, you just, you just swing in and, hey, you guys get, you know, six-inch subs, you know, in a glass of water, right? Like no chips, right? Nothing like, you know, like – um, and so like, you know, bare minimum, don't even think about cookies, you know, that type of stuff. <laughs> and so we're doing the whole deal. And, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to call, I'm just going to call it in. You know, I, I, we had, I think we had won, it was late. I'm like, I was going to call it in. They're going to make it on my walk in there, grab and bring it out to the bus, you know? And so I was turning off. That's what I did. And, and, uh, bringing stuff, I'm bringing stuff on the bus with the, the staff and Jason's back there. And then, like I said, I know he'd been having troubles with weight and usually it's after a weigh in did he have the most trouble? And so, you know, I, like I said, normally do six inch subs, you know, this time uh, I asked if at that time before they had the little sandwiches that Subway does now, I said, Hey, is there any chance you guys can make a three inch sub? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I came on the bus and handed everything out and I gave Jason the last one, three inch sub and everybody just, you know, you know, broke out laughing. And, you know, he tells uh, me later, he goes, you know, Hey, yeah, good job coach, but it didn't quite work out. Cause I, I drove straight to McDonald's. <laughs> you know, oh, man. But, uh, but no, it's stuck it's it to okay. himself, coach, not just you. He stuck it to himself. <laughs> yeah, right. But, uh, but no, I mean, there's a, yeah, there's a ton of stories as a, you know, as a, uh, a head coach, you, man, good stuff and bad stuff, right. The battles you had to fight in division three, it was a lot of those things, right. How can you, you know, pinch, pinch every penny. You know, we were working Cleveland Browns games. Oh my gosh. You know, we were, and we were doing really well fundraising wise working for working Cleveland Browns. Games. We worked for, you know, we started out working security, then concession stand, then we were working uh, security in the dog pound. Right. And, uh, oh my God. And so that was, uh, that was my favorite experience, you know, just being there and we had to check tickets because people would like to come down to the dog pound, you know, and, and that didn't have tickets in there. Right. And so this guy's coming back with, you know, seven, eight beers, you know, like, oh my God. Like so I'm like, uh, sir, I need to see your ticket. <laughs> Let's just say he wasn't happy. And, uh, I was losing, I was, I was, uh, you know, affecting his game experience. He let me know, uh, that, and he had to set his beers down because I couldn't hold his beers, you know? So it was, uh, yeah, it was, you know, those are, those are some of the times I look back and, and, uh, you know, you can laugh about right now. They're pretty miserable at the time, but it's like, man, those things, you know, really allowed me to just craft who I was as a coach, right. Find a way, got to be creative in every single way to, to, to give your program an edge, right. To give your guys an edge. And, you know, I think that's going to be really comparable to, to what I'm going to have to do here at Bellarmine. You know, I'm going to have to be creative uh, and what we do to give ourselves an edge in every way. And that's something I'm really looking forward to finding out the different challenges that we have and just attacking them. Right. And the same thing I learned at Iowa, right? We're always we're always trying to find the edge, right? Incredibly competitive, and um, you know, I'll throw I guess I'll throw a, a Coach Gable story out there. I don't remember how old he was. I you know I I thought it was 
you know, I thought he was really old. First time I wrestled, I'm a freshman there coming in, right? And he knows I'm, you know, I'm a, you know, walk on coming in the program and whatnot, but he likes to still roll around a little bit. And he's like, yeah, I'd, I'd been on the aerodyne back after practice and we had a pretty tough practice, you know, but I was in phenomenal shape. I trained really hard and, you know, conditioning was never a factor for me. Right. And he's like, Hey, you want to, you know, roll around with me? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, roll with Gable. Like why, you know, I was going to pass that up, you know? And uh, he's like, I'll just, you know, I'm going to lay flat, you know, here on the mat. And uh, you just try to turn me for a little bit, you know, I'll kind of warm up that way a little bit more. And he had, of course, already been on the Airdyne bike, you know, to, you know, 20, 30 minutes or whatever it was getting his workout in. But so I just warm up my body a little bit here. You're just trying to turn me, but no legs, you know, I had the hip replacement, right? I can't, and I'm like, no legs. I'm like, that's my entire offense. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> we want me to do the half Nelson you over here. Like just, okay. It was like a half Dan Gable over and put him over. Right. Like, and so like, you know, yeah, I was trying to find a way and get creative that way. And, you know, 10 minutes of me struggling to, you know, even get my hand even on top of his neck, let alone, you know, get him out of position or catch a wrist or anything. Right. And uh, he slowly, just slowly stand up and build his base. And he's a rock. The dude is strong. Like, I'm like, I just, I couldn't believe how strong he was. Right. So he got wrist control on me, slowly stood up, turned around about as fast as I'm talking right now turned around, hold on to my wrist and, and run her feet. And I'm like, Oh, okay. We're on her feet now, you know, but what I didn't realize is that he wasn't gonna let go of my wrist. And I'm not, I've never, <laughs> I mean, wrestled, I've wrestled a lot of guys in my time at Iowa, right. Doug Schwab, right. TJ Williams, you know, Mike Zadick, you know, uh, I mean, whatever, right. Cliff Moore, a ton of dudes, right. Some, a lot of national champions, world, world medalists, right. All that, but nobody had made, me feel like I felt there, which I, I've never felt so much weight transfer happen when he had his hands on me and whatever age he was at that time, you know, I felt like my feet were literally under the mat and he just, you know, slowly grabbed my leg, put me down and like, I mean, just felt helpless, you know, and it's like, man, this guy is old. There's no way he should be able to do it like this to me, you know, and uh, <laughs> then, you know, then you get in his best position, right. Then you're on bottom and he's on top and wow. let's just say, you know, one of the things I think Gable appreciated about me, because I was, you know, I see him wrestle some other dudes and like guys are like, I'm done, you know, I'm done. I'm, you know, I'm out. And uh, I know I, I just never did that. I was never going to say, you know, I'm done or I'm, you know, I want out and, and, you know, and not earn my way out of there. Right. And so, but yeah, he, uh, he was able to put me in some positions where you really couldn't use muscle groups, you know, so he's, he's just a absolute incredible dude. Um, you know, obviously the best coach in division one, you know, wrestling history. And you know, I don't think it's, you know, even close in that regard, but he's a, he's an incredible dude. And those are some fun experiences and memories. And like I said, somebody that I still lean on for advice, you know, today and incredibly grateful that I have guys like him and Bill Zadek that, you know, we're a part of it and coach brands and, you know, those guys that are still in it. And, uh, you know, I get to lean on for, for advice and have good relationships with all those guys. And, um, it's important for me to, to keep learning. And those are great guys to, to learn from. Awesome. Good. It's awesome. I love it. Thank you for sharing the stories, man. Yeah. This yeah. Is some of my favorite stories ever, man. When you get to t- get to hear those stories, obviously everybody likes to hear old Iowa stories. I mean, yeah. who doesn't like to hear an old Heidelberg story too, while they're at it. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm into that. I'm from <laughs> Northwest Ohio. I'm from Oak Harbor. You know that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, Jared, can you give us the quick, singlet promo codes right for because we already know bellerman's probably going to be rocking some, some have BA, you seen the ba you know? center coach Shack? yeah um, so i had i saw it when it was still under construction i haven't seen it for a number of months now so i've been able to see some of the pictures and things like that of some of the things he's been able to finish it up with but yeah he still had some some lifts in there and was doing some painting yet when i was in there last so Zeb yeah, just I'm rolled through. Get what Zeb, just rolled what through i got a I mean, it was incredible. Yeah. I couldn't believe how close it was to Cincinnati Alder High School. Mm-hmm. Dude, it's like under a mile and a half from Cincinnati Alder. So coaches, my thing is, I bet you coach goes up there to recruit, obviously, in the next year, under the next year, next four to five months. Go If you go to Alder, you go to LaSalle, or you go into those local schools, it's not, uh, it's not super close to Mason. But there's some really good schools there, obviously, that you'll be able yeah. to hit up. Right. You get a chance to go to Alder. Alder's within a mile and a half. I mean, I might be wrong. It might be two miles or three miles. Right. It's right around the corner from Alder. I couldn't believe that. And uh, 
gas tank. Gary Traub was there training. Yeah. Uh, Coach Mason, Charles Mason from Mount St. Joe was there. So, you know, Josh has got a good thing going. He's bringing in good people. The facility is yep. incredible, though. It can be a full three mats if he wants it to be. He's got two mats down right now and another half mat down in like another a side room. He's got a sauna. It's a cool two, two setup. I was rooms. really surprised. Yeah, it's a, it's laid out. It, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like shocked. I was like, this is really awesome, Josh. His offices yeah. are upstairs in like a mezzanine area, and then there's warehouse space there. Uh, a, a full men's and women's equal uh, locker room. That really surprised me. The whole facility is it's, it's the real deal. I was really pleasantly surprised by what Josh Sasty's done with the Barbarian uh, Center in uh, Cincinnati, man. And it's in Cincinnati proper. Yeah, I was, uh, I was gonna say my wife was showing me something, uh, a post that uh, either him or his wife had had on Facebook of, you know, when they started their business out and, you know, had their two bedroom apartment, apartment, yeah, two bedroom apartment, had boxes all over it. And I was like, man, that's just absolutely awesome. This, you know, talk about just ground, you know, grinded and, and, uh, you know, built relationships with the people and has done it right every step of the way. And, and uh, now he's able to do something like you just mentioned, Bill, provide a facility like that, that everybody in the area and elite level guys can come in and train at and, uh, you know, they can do clubs in and, and camps and clinics and that type of stuff in. It's uh, it's pretty awesome to see what he's done. Yeah, I, he's uh, he, he's growing it pretty quick too, right? He uh, yeah. had an apartment and he had a small complex. That I remember visiting nothing like that, but uh, it, you know, I visited a couple of times and always, some, always someone popping in too. It's like, oh, hey, you know, every time I'm there, someone new popping in and, yeah, you know, <laughs> stopping by. But uh, yeah, August 22nd, I'll be down there. I'm looking forward to it. So we got another Team Ohio cool. camp. So looking forward to it. Going to be down there. So. Have to mark that on the recruiting calendar then. That's good. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, coach, you got anything else for us? Yeah, man. I just, you know, uh, want to thank you guys for the for the opportunity to talk about Bellarmine and and uh, excited to get on here again with you guys and and uh, tell you tell you how things are going. But really excited to to get to meet the guys in person and and uh, get things rolling there. I think you guys are going to see some great things uh, happen from them from the guys on the team and. Uh, hopefully start blowing the social media thing up here, you know, pretty soon. And, and uh, you know, one of my goals, uh, one of my outcome goals that I'm hoping to have is that uh, the wrestling world will get behind here when we get things rolling. We just got our Instagram account started now, but. Um, Give it a uh, shout out. What is it? What is it? Uh, and so it's, it's BU Knights wrestles the same as our uh, um, Twitter. Twitter handle, but it, it finishes in WRE. But, uh, but yeah, ultimately I'm hoping to get that, uh, that following to, to bigger than the athletic department to really create a, a, a big splash. And so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hit you guys up when that time comes to see if you can help us out there to, to make that happen. But just excited, man, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be a blast. I'm really excited for the challenge and, and excited to, to compete with these guys and to, and to recruit and start, uh, start talking about to everybody about Bellarmine. So uh, when you guys get an opportunity, Hey, when you're close, you're, you know, you're not too far away. So, Love to have you guys down there. And uh, when I get settled in a little bit and can show you guys around, I'd love to have you down there. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank to you coach. so much, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice.